name of it. In today's video, we're looking at the centering indicator. That's the centering indicator. It's a dial indicator with the probe at the bottom that centers the bore in a milling machine. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. Today I have this box from Banggood. It's a centering indicator and it's used on a milling machine to center a hole in line to the spindle. There are two styli that have a bent end. Two straight, small and a longer one. And another small styli with a bent end. So in this packet, there are two small spanners. And in this packet, we have a spring-loaded device to find the centre of a centre punch mark. And this is the main body of the centering indicator. And the last thing we have is this rod which fits in the side of the indicator and stops it turning when the machine's running. The first thing I want to do is just check what error is in the dial indicator. And if you turn, you turn the indicator without anything in, touching it, that is the error that's already there. So this end goes into your milling machine spindle and to fit that I'm using a 10mm collet There's a flat on the stylus, on all of the styli, it's a flat and that goes in line with the bolt that's going through the side. You tighten it up with the small spanners that they give you. But these spanners are only pressed steel, so eventually they they wear out. So it's best to use a, a small spanner. Now this is how it arrived, and I couldn't figure out how this works. Looking at this, the stylus has to be at that angle before it works a dial indicator. Let me get you closer. So that doesn't work the dial indicator till the stylus is there. And I could not figure out how this worked. I got in touch with Banggood and they contacted the supplier and they said that this nut here has to be tight. So if you've got one that's like this, you need to tighten this up tight. There's a nut on the back, one on the front. So now when this moves, 
the dial indicator moves. That took me some time to figure that out with the help of the supplier because there's nothing in the instructions or I haven't seen anything where it says this must be tight. I assume that this lever here moved over, contacted that and worked the indicator and it took me a while to figure out that that's not a pivot point, it has to be rigid so you can adjust it. So I'm trying to get that roughly straight, doesn't matter if it's a little bit off because it will still work the dial indicator. Now the other thing you need to do before we work the part is at the top here on this there's a band you have to take this off this is to stop it getting damaged in transit now you can see as the lever goes in the indicator moves up and down and gives you a reading on the dial. Now there's a hole each side of this base for this rod to go in. This is the handle so you can hold the indicator so it doesn't spin around with the spindle. Now it recommends on the instructions that this should be run at less than 100 RPM and the slowest speed I have on my machine is 75. So to set it to 75 I need L1 so L is here and 1 is there. What you can do is just put a magnetic base on your table just to stop the spindle spinning. Lower it down. Centre the spindle by eye. That's about right. Lower it down into the board. You can see there it's running out. Now if I turn the handle on the table the wrong way, you see the whole body's moving up and down. And you can look this gap here and see it's once you turn the table, try and get it right. Put the worst there, pick the lowest point about there, then move on to the other axis. Looks like the best I can get that. Stop it. Lift it out the bore. Now that's centered the bore up to the spindle. It's just a bit of practice to really get the dial indicator needle moving the least amount. 
can see that's there, uh, set up on the centre. I've changed the bore for a, another component with the hole in and roughly lined it up by eye. So now I'll lower it into the bore, just push the lever across to get it into the bore. Make sure you're touching on the bore part of the probe. We'll switch it on. Using the X and Y axis, I'll try and bring that down to, to a zero movement. Oh, that was lucky. Now one thing to, I should point out is that the reading you're getting on here is not a true reading. You're only using the indicator as an indicator. In other words, you can't say it's running out 2 or 3 thou or 0.1 of a millimetre because you've altered the reading on the dial indicator by extending and using the probes. So I think it's best if I explain how this works. This dial indicator is upside down. What I mean is it's working this way with the pro the ball part of the indicator, probing part on the top. Now inside here we have a disc that goes round, touches the dial indicator. That disc is fitted to a spindle comes down here and then the movement you get is worked out on a lever here so if you move a millimeter on this lever it might not, well it won't be a millimeter on the dial indicator and we'll have a look at the center punch alignment. To change the probe under this bolt here the probe should drop out. And that's the center punch alignment probe. The, there's a flat on the edge of the probe Lower it down so there's a bit of tension on the end. Oh, stop that, that's the nearest I can get the run out, or the lowest run out I can get. So we'll lift this up, replace that for a centre drill and see if that's on the mark. You can see the centre punch mark. I'll just lower it down. And it is in line with the mark. I've um, put the probe back in and held it vertical and I'm just interested to see how much error is on the dial indicator compared to actual movement. So what I'll do is move this block into position on 
to touch the dial indicator and we'll set it at zero now I'll set my di digital readout to zero now I'll move each division is supposed to be 0.01 so I'll move that in 0.01 on the digital readout which is there let's move it to point oh one that's there and this, the digital readout says point oh five five so if I move it to half a mil which is there the readout is saying point two six five so you can see the error in the dial indicator it's not giving a true reading now it should give a true reading if I come endwards onto it and this is with the probe vertical so now I'll move my z-axis down 0.5 That's 0.5 and even on that reading you can see it's nowhere near it. So you can't rely on the dial indicator as a dial indicator. You can only use it as an indicator, a reference of run out, not a direct reading. Oh well, that's it for today. Hope that was interesting, hope it was useful, and we'll see you next time on Enox Engineering.